it's important to think about improving memory in schizophrenia because there's been a number of epidemiological studies done to ask the question, how can I best predict patients who do well after they leave the hospital versus patients who don't do well after they leave the hospital? And let's look at symptoms, let's look at demographics, let's look at age, let's look at drug use, let's look at everything we can think of, including cognition. <laughs> And it turns out that what's most predictive of a patient doing well after they leave the hospital is their cognitive ability. And within the cognitive domain, um, both long-term and short-term memory functioning seems to have the largest effect sizes. And this, as you think about it, I don't think it's surprising. If you think about leaving the hospital, um, getting a job, holding a job, or getting back into school and staying in school, Cognition is really crucial, and you're going to have a downward drift in social function if you can't do the work cognitively. Another way um, to look at cognition is to try to start to map it onto what's going wrong in the brain. And the hope in this research is to identify. The original hope was to identify maybe there's a silver bullet, maybe there's this one part of the brain that explains everything that's going wrong, and um, if we can figure out how to improve that part of the brain, we're going to solve the problem. That hasn't turned out to be true. Um, very few cognitive abilities engage just one little part of the brain. They involve many parts of the brain. And the Ill an illness like schizophrenia or any other complex behavioral disorder doesn't just affect one little part of the brain. So the effort now has been to, let's say, focus in on specific cognitive abilities. Let's take one aspect of memory function versus another aspect of memory function and see, well, what part of the brain does this thing versus that thing, and how important is that to how the patient is functioning? And maybe if we figure that out, we'll start to get at these mechanisms. And that's ongoing work, and again, there's there's some potential mechanisms for specific cognitive abilities, um, but not one answer. Um, so this is just an illustration of how functional imaging gets presented and done. This was just a simple list learning task where we showed subjects a list of words and asked them to try to remember them. And then we did a recognition test where they saw those same words and new words and they had to say whether it was old or new. And we compared the list learning with just a passive baseline task. And this was with positron emission tomography. This is what was being done in the 70s and 80s. And this is a difference image where we, where we look at the brain activation for healthy control subjects and the activation for patients. And we subtract patients from controls. And the area where there's a difference gets colored in the brain. And not everyone may be able to see this, but there's areas in the prefrontal cortex, in the ventrolateral prefrontal cortex particularly, and also some the frontal pole area, where during this list learning task, controls had more frontal lobe activation than the patients did. And this finding of reduced frontal lobe function in patients, hypofrontality, is a very consistent story across many tasks in schizophrenia. Um, this work then gets taken to the most recent methods are functional MRI, which, unlike PET, do not require radio ligands, and um, the spatial resolution is better and the time resolution is better. And this was showing fMRI results from the same type of task to just show here the front of the brain being more active in controls than in patients. And here you can see it from a sideways view. Again, more frontal activity in controls. So when you look And you see these images, the functional activity is indicated by the color, and it's overlaid on an, an anatomical MRI. So this is the really nice resolution MRI, but the function is actually the colored areas. <coughs> I spoke to you about how um, there's hope for improving memory in schizophrenia because it's not an issue of forgetting, and this is some um, initial evidence showing bearing that out. As I said earlier, patients tend not to use efficient organizational strategies. This is an attempt to manipulate that using what's called a levels of processing task, 
where now I give someone a list of words and instead of saying, remember these words, I say in one condition, tell me if this word is in uppercase or lowercase letters, which is a shallow processing task. You can do just based on perceptual characteristics of the stimuli, as opposed to a deep processing task where I ask you to make some semantic judgment. Is it likable or unlikable? Is it concrete or abstract? You have to use your semantic knowledge to process the stimulus on a deeper level. When you do that, um, healthy subjects in yellow show this huge benefit in memory for deep minus shallow processing. Patients with schizophrenia show that same benefit. And then when you take it into the magnet and say what's happening in the brain during deep minus shallow processing, both controls in green and patients in red activate this frontal lobe region that was not activated in the previous study. So this was very encouraging because it says that the memory impairment is malleable and this frontal lobe deficit can also be manipulated to some extent. It's not like somebody's had a stroke in this part of their brain and that part of the brain will never work again. It's an issue of engagement often. And now the last part of what I wanted to talk about is the idea of when do we intervene, when do we provide treatment in this illness. And um, treatment of major mental illness um, has paralleled what's happened in major physical illnesses. It used to be that people with heart disease, the first treatment they received was open heart surgery. You know, you didn't know about early warning signs. Somebody had a heart attack and you'd go in and try to fix the problem. And that would be really kind of very late in the illness phase. Um, what's been done with heart disease is identify high blood pressure, treat high blood pressure. With cancer, identify, have women do breast <coughs> self-exams and really kind of catch it early, treat it early. And the same notion is starting to be promoted now for major mental illnesses such as schizophrenia. This is the type of course that you see in this illness. Schizophrenia is a neurodevelopmental disorder where you're born with a certain vulnerability and then there's a period in early adolescence, as early as age 11 or 12 up to the late teens and early 20s, where the brain is changing very quickly and this is the point where you're really at most risk of having a psychotic episode, of becoming acutely psychotic. And this is a, a first episode that can last for a week to a month that's um, very upsetting and very damaging. But people will recover from this first episode and then go into a remission period. And um, if they continue to receive treatment, can be in remission fairly consistently. Although during this remission period, there's a lot of risk for relapse um, if people stop taking their medication and becomes and their environment becomes more stressful, things like that. So. The, the field of mental health has um, traditionally <coughs> started here, so this is where the heart attack occurs, and then you start to provide treatment during the acute episode, and then you try to prevent relapse. Um, and we have a clinic um, in the medical school at UC Davis, I'll be giving you the website information, that sees these first episode patients. And um, we see patients within their first year of illness and provide a lot of treatment so that they recur, they return to this baseline and they stay on this baseline. And that's very promising, but the newest effort, um, which we've received funding from Robert Wood Johnson, is to go into this prodromal phase and start to say, how can we identify these kids who are at risk of becoming psychotic and intervene to reduce the likelihood of them becoming, having this first episode.